Hey y'all, it's Laura. Welcome back to Scrap Lift Sunday. This time we are using a layout for our inspiration that was made by Charissa, and she is short and scrappy on Instagram. So I think this layout is interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, Miranda picked this one. This is definitely more her jam than mine. <laughs> <laughs> she likes a nice busy busy layout with lots of embellishments and I do too but this one I think has a little bit less structure than I normally put in my layout which is really fun like it's a very fun layout and so I was excited to give this a go now these papers that I am using are of course a little bit more calm a little bit more relaxed than the picture there's the papers that Charissa used Charissa used a nice big bold uh, spot and then a black paper with a big bold stars on it I think so it has a lot of big bold colors and so I'm trying to reflect that mix of patterns without going quite so bold in the color scheme especially because this technique here <laughs> those of you who have followed for a while know I'm not a huge fan of distressing papers and it's not that I don't like the look I do like the look I just don't like the way it looks on my layouts. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe it's because I don't practice it enough. That's probably it, let's be honest. But I just get a little frustrated with distressing because it never goes quite the way I want it to. And inevitably I cut one area more than I'm supposed to. And so it just goes wild. And so <laughs> a couple of spots here got a little too roughed up and I had to trim them out. And I was like, ah, oh, well, we're just gonna roll with it. We'll cover it up if we don't like it, right? That's what we'll do, we'll make it work. And the beauty though of this technique, this layout technique, is that there is this absolutely gorgeous peek through of a new color underneath of the roughed up distressed area. And I love, love, love that technique. It's something I've done before, but sparingly. And I really, really like the way that it looks. So. We are diving into that using the ruler on the bottom of my little mat there on my table. I am going to line it up and make sure it's nine inches across because this is a nine by 12 layout. The majority of the layouts I do for my twins or of my twins I put into their album. And so they each have their own albums. And this allows me to play with different sizes. So I do 12 by 12, I do 9 by 12, I do traveler's notebooks. I also do 6 by 8 at Christmas time. So I like to play with different sizes of layouts. I think it keeps my creativity flowing, keeps it moving along, and it keeps new ideas popping into my head and thinking about where pictures should go on the page changes as you play with different sizes. Now for this layout, I did want to bring in some neutrals because of course we got these big bright colors in the background and my photos are fairly dark. They were taken in the morning in my kitchen, which does not have windows. So the windows you see in the background of those photos are actually the next room over. <laughs> so my kitchen can get a little dark. And that is why these photos are a little bit dark. It was also taken in the morning, so the sun's not really up yet. And my darling girls were getting ready for school. And as we have discovered, uh, Olivia is a bit of a caregiver. She is my, of the two twins, she was born first. So technically she's older, but they're twins. So they're the same age. But she definitely has big sister vibes. Like she has very much that caretaker personality type. And so she likes to help her sister pick out her clothes to wear to school. She likes to help her brush her hair. Uh, she'll run and get her a snack to put in her backpack. And she is just very much that caretaker vibe. And in some ways it's a little bit of a, you know, I'm in charge <laughs> sort of thing too. We, we do like some leadership skills in our household. And with Sophia, sometimes that's helpful because Sophia is not a leadership vibe caretaker type. She is a lovely little, you know, kind of head in the clouds, you know, dreamy artistic type. And so sometimes she needs a little help to get caught up with all the things that we need to do in the morning, make sure that we're all getting out of the house on time. So I just find it interesting how well they balance each other out. One of them is the more organized, logical thinking type. The other one is more artsy and creative. And it's really interesting to me to see, especially with twins, how different they can be. So I do have three photos here. Uh, one is four by four, the other two are two by two, and these are printed out with a white border around the outside. And I print them all together as a collage on my Epson PictureMate. That is my main photo printing 
printer. That's the one I mainly use for most of my photos and it has a nice little app and I do have videos showing you how to use that to print out collages like these that can be used to cut apart and make different sized photos. I'll link that for you at the very end of the video. There'll be a little pop-up that has a picture of me holding my printers and I explain how to use them and all that good stuff. So these lovely bits and pieces are from my February kit, which I have dug into quite a bit actually, but this was one of the earlier videos that I did with it. I actually filmed this a while back, but I am having some issues with getting my videos to transfer to my phone, from my phone to the internet. And so I need to figure that out. Uh, iCloud is just being very slow, or my internet connection is very slow, very possible as well, because my internet kind of goes up and down. We live out sort of in a very rural area, and quite often that means that our internet connection goes up and down quite a lot. So this lovely inspiration from Charissa included a lot of kind of busyness around the photos, which I like. I like to embellish around my photos, big fan of that concept. And she used a lot of speech bubbles, if I remember correctly. And so I decided to kind of replicate that with these frames. I have included a lot of chipboard frames in this kit, and I wanted to make sure that I'm getting them onto layouts, getting them used. Even if I don't finish the whole package in this particular kit, I do want to try to use as many as possible and uh, show you how to use them, give you some ideas for how to use them. So this is one way you can do it. You can cluster them in with some smaller photos. And so then they just kind of look like more smaller photos. They just have that same sort of look. And I'm puzzling them together because they're similar shapes. You can do that and have them slightly overlapping one another at slightly different levels just for a little bit of interest on the page. And I think this takes a linear style and makes it a little bit more whimsical, which is what I like. A whimsic whimsical linear layout is my style. Purely defined, that is my style. And so what I'm going to do is play around with a few bits and pieces in this kit. And I'm trying different things out. A lot of what's on here now will stay, but I did decide to go ahead and add some gold washi over here on the left side of my little strip of paper that I've inserted in the middle of this layout. And I really like what this does. This little bit of gold really adds a pop of interest and draws a little bit more attention over here to the left side of the page. And so I'm gonna trim it down halfway because I didn't need this giant gold strip. I do prefer thin gold washi, but for some reason I had this thick one. So I decided, hey, we'll just cut it in half and we'll get more use out of it, totally fine. I always put down a little bit of double-sided tape underneath of my washi because I do not trust washi to stay long-term. If you're using it for a short-term purpose, it's perfect. That's exactly what it will work for. But the majority of my washi just will not stay long-term. And so on a layout where I don't intend to pull up the washi again, I do go ahead and add that double-sided tape just to make it a little bit more permanent. And I am tucking it down underneath of the folded paper there so that it kind of looks like it's just another layer peeking through behind the paper fold. But it's not. It's washi tape. And I think it looks pretty good. I like that bit of gold on there. I think it helps too to tie in some of the gold that I'm going to add at the end. And there's a tiny bit of gold on one of those frames as well, if I remember correctly. So I've got a label on here. I have puzzled together all of these little frames and little bits and pieces from my kit. And now I'm thinking titles. Okay, so what are the elements of this layout that I wanted to get on the page? Well, one of the major ones was, of course, a large title here at the bottom. But I kind of had an idea of what I wanted to say in my title. And I wanted to say something about sisters and, you know, hairstyling, because that's what's happening in the photos. Makes sense. But I also wanted to use one of these larger titles because that sort of fits the vibe of the original layout to have a larger title. So I started with this flawless down at the bottom. And then I realized I could probably tuck in a smaller part of the title above the word flawless because the way those two L's stick up. Otherwise, those L's are going to look a little strange on the layout. and They're not going to maybe tuck in quite as perfectly as I might like and overlap the photos a little too much. So I decided to pull out these tiny little alphas that I've included in my kit. And I'm using several different colors of blue and green to write out Sister Salon flawless, which I thought was a really cute title. And I'm quite happy with it. I think it turned out quite nice. But as I'm pulling out all of the bits and pieces, I want you to notice this little crown that I've put up in the top right corner. 
That came from that title sheet over here to the left, and it doesn't get to stay. I did think long and hard about trying to squeeze it onto the page, but the more I looked at it, I realized it was drawing uh, way too much of my attention, and I decided, no, let's leave it off, and I will try to pop it onto a different layout. But I will kind of duck out and come back and have this set up correctly because at this point I'm just pulling these letters off and then I will, you know, shuffle them into a nice neat little title there at the bottom. Now one of the things about using uh, miniature letters is, and this is maybe just me a me thing, <laughs> they don't ever want to stay where I put them. So I will have to go back and glue that all down. I'll do that off camera, don't worry. But I did try to make that crown work. I thought it was really cute. I just thought it was drawing a little bit too much attention to itself. And there's already quite a bit going on on this page. So going back to my frames, I'm going to bring in some of these little tiny inside pieces, which were perfect to kind of, again, puzzle around my photos and just gives it a more collaged look, which I really, really enjoyed for this layout because Teresa did the same thing. Like her little speech bubbles look like collaged together in kind of a big clump that goes around the top right corner of her photo. And I really liked that. I thought that was kind of fun and different than I normally would do. And so I definitely wanted to give it a go. I'm just giving it a cleaner, more linear version in my take because that's a bit more my style. So now here is my layout all glued down and I'm going to go ahead and add in some journaling strips at the bottom. Now Charissa did a journaling spot so I think she has maybe a 3x4 card or something like that that she's using for her journaling at the bottom but I just decided to bring in some white strips. These are just cutoffs from my basil cardstock. I have a little label at the bottom that says basil on it. I just trim that off, it's a quarter inch, and so that makes it a 12 by 12 sheet. And so then I have all these little white strips left over that are about a quarter inch across and perfect for journaling spots. Now to finish off this layout, I decided to deviate pretty heavily from the original in my finishing up my last embellishing and decided to bring in some enamel dots. I really thought this yellow strip needed to be dressed up just a little bit because it's fun but it felt a bit plain and that's only because I've used a very simple design there. Had I used something that was bold and poppy like Charissa did, it wouldn't need this, but I didn't. And I was happy to use up some enamel dots because as y'all know I'm on a mission to use up enamel dots this year. Now these lovely little enamel dots are from Pink Fresh Studio, as is most of this layout really. And if you are curious what is in my February kit, I will go ahead and pop the February kit video up at the end as well, so you can go check it out if you are curious. Now that I've added a bunch of scattering, the little bitty bits that I use to add some detail at the end, I'm going to come in with some splattering. I always do two levels of splattering. So this is my controlled splatter with Nouveau Drops, and then I'll come in with uncontrolled splatter using some gold ink spray. Now the golding spray doesn't show up really super well on this layout, but I do still really enjoy the added effect, a little bit of a, a glimmer that it adds to the finished product. Now be sure to go check out Miranda Weber's version of this layout, and until next time, bye y'all!